Hi there, I'm Dr. Benedict Albensi, a researcher in the Department of Pharmacology and Therapeutics at the University of Manitoba at St. Boniface Hospital, the Albrechtson Research Center. This supplement focuses on new concepts in magnetic resonance as applied to cellular and in vivo applications. Advanced imaging sequences for imaging and spectroscopy, high-speed multi-dimensional MR techniques, and quantitative image and spectral processing techniques are featured in our special supplement. MRI has been proven to be a powerful clinical tool, but surprisingly is still underutilized in many clinical settings. Presumably, costs and a lack of awareness for its true capabilities are responsible for this situation. Hopefully, numerous advances over the last decade that have demonstrated its utility in the diagnosis of many disorders and experimental conditions will convince hospital administrators, government leaders, and other healthcare professionals to embrace this powerful imaging modality more fully. In particular, research areas involving iron contrast, functional MRI of the spine, ultra-high performance computing, and imaging and stroke, two-proton MRS, GABA measurements, and hyperpolarized probes are just an inkling of the new developments in this exciting field. For example, contrast-enhanced cellular imaging with MRI has many clinical applications, as described in several articles in the supplement. Also, molecular imaging probes rely on a variety of contrast mechanisms to boost MR contrast, including chelates of paramagnetic metals such as gadolinium or manganese, which shorten the T1 relaxation time, super paramagnetic iron oxide, which shortens the T2 relaxation time, and hyperpolarized substances including xenon, helium, or carbon-13, which can boost the MR signal up to 100,000 times, which are discussed in our supplement. Unlike imaging modalities, MRI is capable of generating contrast based on functional and structural features without the addition of a contrast agent. This unique capability is demonstrated by several papers in our supplement. Moreover, with larger data sets and more sophisticated analyses, it becomes increasingly common for MRI researchers to exceed the limitations of standalone computer workstations, as discussed here. The articles in this supplement clearly show the growing ability of MRI to be applied to cellular and in vivo applications. As the abilities of MRI grow, the applications of MRI will increase and the clinical use of MRI will also increase.